So you must have got a lot of people uh, advising you or recommending you not to chase past returns of your funds and uh, specifically looking at uh, the kind of returns you've been seeing in mid cap and small cap to expect the same kind of return going ahead and basis of these returns should you be having these kind of fund in your portfolio this is always a point of conversation and discussion because equity mutual fund investors should ideally not invest in schemes that have given high returns in the past that should not be the basis of selecting a criteria of selecting a mutual fund in your portfolio and uh, a lot of them also advise that instead of that you should be looking at pockets where valuations are reasonable maybe a hybrid category or a combination of multiple asset is a good choice for you uh, uh, you should avoid thematic funds because you know the markets move in a cycle and so you must be seeing the performance of thematic or sector specific fund also based on those kind of market cycle but uh, what is it about past returns and why should you be not chasing it if that is the basis uh, if if that's been a past uh, a performance of a particular fund uh once you invest in it uh, uh what should be your expectation then from the fund uh let's uh, get all of these questions answered i have with me anup pandya founder money edu school and a good evening and welcome to the show uh so yes theoretically we understand we should not be chasing our past returns because market movement keeps changing and so the the, the performance of the fund will also change because your fund invest money in the markets sector specific market cap specific but then uh uh, uh there has to be some kind of an expectation you know when you invest in a particular fund uh, uh, if a fund has really performed well uh, irrespective of the market criteria or the kind of calls the fund manager has taken uh, 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 what actually should be factored in when you are looking at that past performance uh, uh, and it's it and if it has been a stellar performance maybe in the case of small cap and mid cap for example uh, 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 what should be the parameter of understanding that particular past performance and how should we differentiate and not expect the same kind of performance going ahead uh, uh right knowledge i think is very important but then knowledge in what way and for what kind of parameter good evening kavita so if you look at any fund and this is across categories it need not be just equity oriented funds whenever you look at selecting a particular fund there are a multiple factors that you would consider in terms of making a decision so obviously one of those things which every person will look at is how the fund has performed in the past now the problem arises when one takes the immediate past return and then projects this into the future and why is that a problem and that is just because of the fact that what has immediately happened need not be repeated again going ahead so any time any person looks at a mutual fund and they are looking at the performance they need to first put the performance into context and when one means put it into context it means looking at what has been the overall market situation during this point of time see that is the reason why mutual funds also have a benchmark it's not just absolute performance that one needs to see one also needs to see what has been the performance of the benchmark itself so for example if you open up a fund today be it a large cap flexi cap mid cap or even a small cap they will show very strong returns in the past one year in the past three years because this has been a time period when you have seen the equity markets virtually go in one particular direction so one has to put that into context that if the equity market has risen so much then this is the performance which a particular fund has shown now that need not be repeated in the future because the same conditions which were there in the past need not be there in the future so that is how one needs to look at it now i'll give you a better example even in case of a debt fund see people make the same mistake which should not be done for example if you are in a rate cutting cycle where rates are coming down in the economy then you will find that debt funds do pretty well so during that period if you look at a period where there have been several rate cuts interest rates in the economy have come down then you will find that the debt fund performance is also pretty good in some cases it could even go into double digits now if you base your perform your expectation based on this going ahead when rate cuts either would not happen or maybe there might be a rate rise also then 
the expectation is not going to be met because the conditions are not going to be replicated. So across categories, one has to look at the overall market condition and then look at returns to see what is the actual situation. Uh, so when we look at returns, Arnav, we also compare it to the benchmark. You know, we're talking about uh, looking at a fund's performance and comparing it with the benchmark. So if you're investing in a fund it uh, 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 and it's an investment time horizon, which means it's for more than five years, five to seven years, uh, there has to be some kind of an expectation on a, on a, on a long-term average return. Uh, uh, basis. Uh, should we keep that aligned with the benchmark performance? Because here we are just taking a long term average and uh, uh, that can be done via a benchmark or via the fund performance. What, what would be the right way to look at it? No, so if you are looking at the fund performance in the past, you obviously need to look at the benchmark to see whether it has outperformed the benchmark or not. Now, so that, but that is in the past. Now, if you are looking at the future, Again, you don't know how much or how a benchmark will perform. So at that point of time, you need to bring the whole uh, picture into consideration, which is that the equity markets or even the debt market, they go through cycles. So if you have a period when there was a consistent rise and you are seeing very strong returns for a small period of time, over a longer period, this will average out and it will come down. So one needs to bring that perspective into play because if, for example, say a fund has been giving 30-40% over last one year or two years, do not expect that to continue. Expect the average return to come down significantly from those levels because when the cycle turns, when things become a little bit tough, you will find that there could be periods of negative returns also. But on an overall basis, once the whole cycle is seen, the ups and downs are seen, that is the time period when you will realize that the average return is something different. And that is what you will earn for staying with the fund over this entire cycle. Because it's not possible to time the markets and get in and out. Uh, because one has no idea when the cycle turns or when things become better. Arnav, now next question is, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, investing in mutual funds and having the kind of uh, 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 return expectation, any specific expectation setting that you might have to do when you're investing in a sector-specific fund or a thematic fund? So, when you are investing in a sector-specific fund, you might have an expectation which is slightly higher than what you would do say for a diversified fund. So if you are, for example, you are, you believe that the overall corporate profits will grow by 10 to 15% on a consistent basis and you base your expectation that uh, a diversified fund will give you say on an average over a longer period of time, 12%, then you might want to, or you might base your expectation for a thematic fund to the slightly higher side. But the risk here is that this kind of performance and the amount which you earn actually depends on you getting in and out at the right time. So that involves a little bit more of doing active management, which a lot of investors are not able to do because it's very difficult to catch when a particular trend turns specifically with respect to a particular sector. So the idea is that here you are taking a slightly higher risk. So you are expectations might also be slightly higher. So when we are talking about, since we're talking about mutual funds, uh, would you want to share the journey of any particular fund which have, which which you know has been a stellar performer? And uh, then we saw a dip in the performance and then again there has been a pickup. So, uh, and you know when the fund was up, obviously there must have been a great amount of interest in investors to put their money in that particular fund. But then we saw the in uh, investor invest uh, interest also, you know, withdrawing because of the poor performance. Has there, has there been a story of a particular fund of this type? So, if you look at any fund which has been there for a slightly longer period of time, seven, eight years or more, then it would definitely have gone through the cycle. So, you will actually see this story playing out across funds, across mutual fund categories. So, for example, I mean, 
just taking a few examples, there are virtually many tens of more such schemes. But if you go back, one of the oldest schemes was uh, Franklin India Blue Chip Fund. So that fund also at one time was a very po popular fund, very showed high returns. Then it showed a period wherein the returns were not that high or it was a slight underperformer for quite some period of time. Then it came back. Similarly, I mean, if you look at uh, another fund like HDFC Top 100, earlier it was under called a different name, but every this fund also had a long period of underperformance, but uh, two, three years later, it came back and the returns that it showed saw that overall, when you looked at a longer time period, there was an outperformance by it. Similarly, I mean, if you go to uh, another category, like a small cap category, you have the DSP small cap fund. At one time, it was virtually one of, there are few small cap funds at that point of time. And this I'm talking about a long time ago, or more than a decade ago. So at that point, it was one of the favorites. It had a rough patch, but again, then later on performance improved. So you will find these kind of examples across categories and any fund which has a long history, it would have gone through these phases because there, it's not possible that every fund or any fund will have a consistently higher performance across long periods of time. So you will find it uh, underperforming for some point, but as an investor, sticking with it, sticking with your goals and uh, ensuring that your portfolio is in tune with your needs, that is most important. All right. So, um... Uh, that's a trick behind uh, not chasing the uh, past return. Thank you so much, Anna, for being on the show and helping our viewers with this today. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.